Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, it's not just Christmas this month, Carl. We're trying to be inclusive here, remember? Right. Um, Merry everything, everyone. I'm Carl Asami. And I'm Max Cal. And today, we're going to be sharing a treasure with you from the 80s. You remember the 80s, Max? We were like three back then, so not really. Well, I bet you remember this guy. Ha! See that? But we're not even reviewing this guy. Well, we're not talking about Santa's magic toy bag until we do. Anyone who lived through the 80s will remember the wisecracking, cat-eating alien known as ALF. Created by puppeteer Paul Fusco, ALF was introduced to the world in 1986 in a comedic fish-out-of-water sitcom which quickly became a huge hit for NBC. The show ran for four seasons, later spawning several cartoons and a television movie. He even made an impact in Germany, of all places, recording two albums and four singles. ALF stuck around the public eye well into the 2000s, being a mainstay on talk show and game show circuits. Whether you want to believe it or not, ALF was, and still is to many, a pop culture icon. Only in the 80s, am I right? But before all of that, Paul Fusco was a struggling puppeteer. A big break came in 1981 after producing a short film called The Crown of Bog. Despite its low production values, it caught the attention of Showtime executives who thought it would fit within their other children's programming. Well, The Crown of Bog was a Halloween show. I made it with my own money, which was kind of stupid because no one should ever do that. They saw The Crown of Bog and asked us to produce six shows for them with different puppets and on different holidays. We didn't have much money to work with, but once we figured out where and how to spend the money they had given us for the specials, we were off and running. Paul and company managed to produce all six shows in a single year, each special being ready for their respective holidays in 1983. After running on Showtime for a couple of years, they were aired one last time in 1990 on Nickelodeon. From there, the specials fell into obscurity as the master tapes sat in a vault for 25 years. In 2013, the rights fell back to Paul Fusco, and he was shocked to find that anyone remembered them, let alone wanted to watch them again. He was soon contacted by a passionate fan at Legend Films, and by 2014, all the specials were digitized and released on DVD. So now, I don't have to save my VHS tapes anymore. You've never thrown away any of your VHS tapes. And I never will. The special begins where else but the North Pole? Santa's elves are hard at work, and you guessed it, singing! With music provided by the Thomas the Tank Engine Orchestra. Okay, it was actually composed by Paul's wife, Linda Fusco. Apparently, all the music that was submitted for this project sucks so much that she broke down and did it all herself. It's the usual Christmas affair, rhyming boy with toy and once a year with cheer. It's pretty generic, but it's kind of a hard rule you're supposed to open Christmas specials with a song. Like Rhapsody Kids? I'm a decorating master, no one is faster. Don't you know I'm a Christmas tree blaster? No, nothing is like Rhapsody Kids. The song wraps up and toys are inspected. This leads to the discovery of a rather unusual toy. Uh, what is that? I don't know what it is, sir. It's 2020. No one knows what a rotary phone is anymore. Sherman made it. The one who made the wind-up yo-yo. And the polka dot fire truck that goes mama when you squeeze it. Don't forget the duck that barks. <laughs> It seems this Sherman fellow they're talking about has made quite the name for himself. Let's see how he's handling things in the mailroom. No, no, no! I said file the letters, not pile the letters! I don't think this is gonna work out. Maybe you'd like it better in the gift wrapping department. Oh, I was there already, and they sent me to the reindeer stables, who sent me to the workshop, who sent me here. Damn, with all those transfers and that kind of job security, you would think Sherman was a cop. Sherman begs to be given another chance to prove himself, but his boss Noland is having none of it. Oh, please. I want to become an official elf in the worst way. In the worst way. Carl! You can't just assume I edited that in there. It could have been Sindorekis. Santa Claus watches everything you know. 
Are you serious? Is Santa Claus a subscriber? Okay, seriously though, the actual line here is pretty funny. I want to become an official elf in the worst way. Well, that's exactly how you're doing it. Despite the Christmas deadline and Sherman's clear learning disabilities, Nolan decides to give him another chance. Then on a plot point that's certainly not going to come up again, we learn that the elves are waiting for a special letter to arrive. Hey, Nolan! We haven't heard from Paul in New Haven, Connecticut yet. Who's Paul? Every year he presents us with some major challenge, but we always come through, right? Right! We can make anything for Santa's magic toy bag! Oh, they just said the line in the movie. Everybody take a shot! <laughs> Sherman begins to lament his poor work performance. Like, they taught me how to make toys, but I still feel that there's something missing in them. I don't know, his creations would fit right in with Sid's mutant toys from Toy Story. Maybe Sherman's on to something. Lunchtime arrives and everyone bails, leaving Sherman all alone for a couple of seconds. He can't possibly screw anything else up in that amount. Oh, hey, kid. This bunch of mail just came in. Where do you want it? Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs! We cut to Sherman having a conversation with his best friend. Uh, okay. Okay, that's kind of creepy. They didn't like my toys in the workshop. I tried to make them special, too. I know there's something missing, Danny, but no one will tell me. You should kill them. All they ever say is, you'll learn. They're the ones who must learn. We'll teach them. Sherman! They want you in the mail room. Sherman's in trouble now, for his snafu in the mail room has everyone in an uproar. How could you throw away 500 letters? I was only gone 20 minutes. You underestimate Sherman's abilities here. He didn't even need the full 20 minutes to screw it all up. Sherman threw 500 letters into the trash, a whole stack of mail. Luckily, the boys in the incinerator room caught it, and just in time. Movie, please. Please tell me that Sherman gets to work in the incinerating room. Sherman. I'm sorry, sir. It was an accident, really. I'll transfer him to another department. Not the ornament factory. Please, not the ornament factory. I already work there for five minutes. Okay, movie, you, you've already established that Sherman is a loser. Certainly there's room for another plot point somewhere. No, I think Sherman will go to the bakery and work with Mrs. Claus. <laughs> what kind of trouble could he get into there? I did it again. Continuing to fail upwards, Sherman gets his big break working under Mrs. Claus. Is it true that you've only been here two weeks and you've worked in every department? Well... All except the candle factory. They said they didn't carry enough fire insurance for me. Uh, I guess that rules out the incinerating room. Maybe next Christmas, Max. God bless Mrs. Claus, as she does her best to raise Sherman's spirits. Sounds like great fun. Well, it is, Sherman, dear. And the best part of it is that here you can eat your mistakes. I wouldn't advise eating any of Sherman's mistakes. Is poison insurance a thing? Sherman gets to work, and what happens next ever. is anyone's guess. Just kidding. Sherman screws it all up. Oh no, Sherman! You're supposed to bake the cookies, not the candy canes. Does that go for gumdrops, too? You didn't. They're done. You're fired! Can I maybe stay and help you clean up? No! I mean, no problem, dear. A beaten down Sherman retires to his room, but not before ruining more lives. Hey, let me help you carry no, those. No, 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 no come no, on, no, let me no, just take no, one no, of them no, from no, you. It's okay, Sherman. No, no, no. All right. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. With nowhere left to turn, Sherman consults his best friend. I wanted Mrs. Claus to tell Santa all about me. Well, I'm sure she will now. I don't know what happens, Danny. You know what happens next. Well, it's been a while, so why not have another song? I, for one, can't wait to learn more about Sherman. I just can't win. 
I don't fit in. Loser. Got it. Cut to Mrs. Claus and Santa discussing the Sherman problem. Oh, this Sherman fellow sounds like quite a character. Nah, he's actually pretty bland and has like no discernible character traits. I feel like we're reviewing the Mirthmorn Christmas special all over again. Bert Worm and Sherman are like the exact same character. Losers? Yeah. Santa and Mrs. Claus are interrupted by Grindle, who has another one of Sherman's abominations. We found another one of his toys in the workshop. What is it? An electric kite, sir. Comes complete with a two-mile extension cord. Ingenious. Sure, if you're trying to get a kid killed. An electric kite? An electric chair might actually be safer than this. Frankly, I don't think he's cut out for this kind of work. Well, he's clearly not, but maybe there's other elf stuff he can do. Being the wise man he is, Santa helps to put things into perspective in a rather sweet scene. He reads a letter from a little girl whose father has recently lost his job, and all she wants for Christmas is a warm jacket for her mother and a job for her father. What color coat do you suggest? I'm partial to blue. But, sir, about Sherman? Oh, blue it is! And see to it that Linda gets one of our new dollhouses, Akron, Ohio. Who do we have in that area? Hmm. Bernie. Good man. See what he could do about finding Linda's father a job. I'll get right on it, sir. You see, Grindle, this makes the Sherman problem seem very minor, doesn't it? I don't know, Danny. I just don't have that magic touch. Whatever it is. Santa sends Grindle to fetch Sherman for a little one-on-one. -on -one. Sherman believes he's about to be fired, which, let's be honest, he probably should be. It was an accident, believe me. I'll make it easy on you, sir. You don't have to say it. It was an honor to work for you. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. I'll go get my suitcase. I'll be out of here in five minutes. Sherman! You didn't let me finish. You didn't even let me start. I'm sorry. You see, I never do anything right. This guy. This freaking guy. Charlie Brown has more confidence than this. I have a problem. You don't say. You see, every year on the night before Christmas Eve, I take the magic toy bag out and give it to one of my elves for safekeeping. Okay, I don't buy it. Santa is clearly just fabricating a made-up job for Sherman that no one could possibly fail just to make him feel better. It's a good plan, but Sherman doesn't go for it. Why me? Well, why not? Well, because everything I've done so far has been wrong. Thank you, sir, but I couldn't run the risk of ruining Christmas. If something happened to that bag... I didn't hear what you said. All I heard was, Santa, thank you very much, and I won't let you down. I said that? Ho, oh, oh, ho! Words to that effect! This Santa is awesome. I don't even have a joke here. This is a good Santa Claus. Christmas Eve has finally arrived, and all the elves are scrambling to complete their work. Things seem to be going pretty well, but there is this one loose end. What did Paul ask for this year? Well, as of an hour ago, his letter still hadn't arrived. I hope nothing happened to him. You know, that was a very nice thing you did last night giving Sherman the magic toy bag. Well, I'm sure I did the right thing. What could he do to it? Kidding aside, he really doesn't need to do anything. He just has to leave the bag in his room and everything will be fine. The story is basically over at this point. I know. I'll wash the bag for Santa. It'll be sparkling clean for tonight. It's the least I can do. The least you can do is nothing! You literally don't have to do anything and you'll actually succeed at something! Oh no! Oh no! It shrank! It shrank! How could I have done such a dumb thing? Don't ask us. We're not the ones who make it look so easy. This isn't even endearing anymore. Just fire!
fire this guy already! Danny, what am I gonna do? Look at... Okay, so like, what part of you should kill them is not getting across here? Wait a minute, that's it! I'll make another toy bag for Santa! I'm gonna be perfectly honest here, Sherman. You have no confidence, no real friends, no marketable qualities, no life skills to speak of. You can't even do a simple card trick, and now you're telling me you're gonna fabricate a magic bag with no sewing experience, mind you. I I'm just not seeing it. I really think you should probably just kill them. I can do it. I have to do it. Christmas depends on me. I freaking hate Christmas. So Sherman gathers some supplies and gets to work by a montage. Having to complete his work, Sherman shows off to Danny. I finally finished it! What do you think of Santa's new magic toy bag, Danny? What the, you've been gone for ten hours? And all you did was steal a mailroom bag and attach a bunch of random crap to it? How is this even gonna work without magic? How could I forget? The bag has to be magic! Oh no! Meanwhile, Santa and the rest of the elves have finished preparing everything for Christmas, and Santa is very pleased. Every one of you should be very proud. We get better every year. We even overcame a couple of, uh, <laughs> obstacles. Yeah. Where is Sherman, anyway? Where do you think? He only has one friend. It's no use, Danny. I worked so hard to make this bag special, but... It's not magical. How could it be if I made it? You know, Sherman, if you're not giving that to Santa anymore, I could always use another body bag. Oh, how can I tell Santa? Tell him what? Sherman explains everything. How he ruined the toy bag, and how he tried to make a new one. Is this the bag that you made for me, Sherman? Yes, sir. It's... Just a stolen mailroom bag with a bunch of random crap on it. That's what I told him. Come over here, Sherman. Nah, Santa goes on to explain what was missing from Sherman's work all along. A high school level education? Well, that would probably help, but actually... It can't be explained. It's, it's more like a feeling that comes from inside. Puberty? No! He's talking about his heart. Oh, oh, I've heard of this. He needs to talk to a doctor about it. Santa, of course, is talking about spirit and how the magic of Christmas comes from inside. And that's the secret that was missing in everything I made? Um, sure, let's just go with that. You found the special magic when you worked to make this bag because you believed it would work. I just can't win. I just don't have that magic touch. I never do anything right. It's not magical. How could it be if I made it? You believed it would work. You believed in the magic of Christmas. That's right. Sherman believed in himself. So I guess it's time for one last song as everyone sings about the lessons learned. We knew you could do it, you finally learned. None of you jerks believed in Sherman. This was his best friend for the whole movie. Yeah, and I didn't get a song. Danny aside, everyone is happy. But remember, there's still that one more loose end. Paul's letter has finally arrived. We'll never have enough time, sir. Let me see that. <laughs> What is it, sir? Oh, our old friend Paul did it again. This year he wants, of all things, an electric kite. I don't get it. No, but Paul will. <laughs> Santa declares Sherman as a certified elf and invites him to ride on his sleigh. Everyone cheers. Yeah! <laughs> Danny, did you hear that? I made it. I'm an official elf. With that, Sherman kisses his best friend. Well, I guess that means no new body bag for me this year. 
Merry Christmas to all. And to all, a good night. I freaking hate Christmas. Santa's Magic Toy Bag. It doesn't quite have a good ring to it, but it's a good film. I think Paul Fusco and his contemporaries often get overlooked because of, well, the popularity of Jim Henson. Which, sure, I get it, but it's a damn shame. Paul Fusco has some real comedic chops. It's no wonder he went on to create a hit show. His depiction of Santa is fantastic in this. Seriously, it's a pretty decent film. It's a basic story, but it's filled with funny dialogue, witty sarcasm, and fun characters. The rest of the cast keep up with the script and bounce off with each other with ease. For as much as we and the rest of the elves rag on Sherman, he actually has more going for him than Bert Worm ever did. Even though he has no confidence in himself, he keeps on trucking along. There's something to be said for persistence. The puppets are well designed and have solid construction. The models, props, and sets don't stick out for being a low budget production. More importantly, the lighting is very professional. They were smart with the way they spent their money here. Everything's a step up from their previous work. And I know we sort of glossed over the music, but it's also commendable. Especially considering Linda Fusco had no experience prior to this. Okay, the opening song is pretty forgettable, but Sherman's song isn't bad. It's got heart, and it uses more complex rhyming structure than you would expect from an amateur. The same goes for the last song, even though the elves totally lie about believing in Sherman. Paul Fusco is on the record as saying this was the best of the holiday specials he made for Showtime. And having watched them all, I think he's got a strong case. It's a sweet Christmas short for the whole family. And thanks to Paul Fusco's comedy, it's legitimately funny for adults too. If you enjoy obscure children's media, puppets, or ALF, you gotta check these specials out. Alright, now that we got that out of the way, we can finally dive into the Santa's Magic Toy Bag. I'm ready! Come on, let's see what we got. Oh, oh dude, not one, not two, but three pieces of coal. I must have been hella good this year. 